Hello, 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 and welcome, 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 welcome. I want to welcome you guys to nights to tonight's um conference, day two of Healing the City and Heels. Um, if you missed last night's show, I tell you, you really missed an amazing um conference. We had four amazing individuals that stopped by and shared with us on last night. We had Dr. Chinchilla J that delivered our keynote. We had Dr. Tamala Lucas who shared um, on Learn and she um, shared through song last night. Dr. Kimberly Thomas shared on Love and Victoria Bruce shared on lead tonight. I'm telling you, we have four amazing individuals again tonight that's going to be sharing from their expertise on learn, love, and lead, and how we can heal our city. Um, I'm excited. If you guys have not checked out our book, I want you to go over to Amazon, check out our Kindle version of the book, 121 Days of Prayer, 365 Affirmations from Around the World. We're just pouring back pouring out what has been poured into us in hopes that it would help heal our lands. So I want you guys to please share this broadcast with someone in your circle of influence. Um, you never know who may be blessed by this broadcast. I'm going to bring Dr. Tamala Lucas up. She's going to lead us in prayer and she's going to sing a song. And then the next voice you hear will be that of Arthur Michelle Kane. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. How are you? How are you? Oh, I'm happy. I'm so excited. Woo! <laughs> well, we want you to lead us in prayer, and then I want you to sing a song for us. Yes, ma'am. I will do that for you. Dear Jesus, thank you for this opportunity to serve you and others. We thank you for giving us your love and Holy Ghost. We thank you for new experiences, new levels, new adventures, new, new, new. Lord, have mercy on us. Forgive us as we repent for omissions of sins and other sins. Thank you, Lord, for giving us a mind to do right. We want to do right by you and other people. And when your people see us, we pray that they see you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We pray for those who are watching and speaking tonight. Let their words encourage somebody. We thank you for our families, jobs, and health. And hallelujah with that, we want to say, there's a leak in this old building, and my soul has got to move. My soul has got to move. My soul has got to move. There's a leak in this old building, and my soul has got to move. A building I made by mankind. There's a leak in this old building, and my soul, who's got to move, has got to move, has got to move. It's got to move. There's a leak in this old building, and my soul has got to move. Oh, this building is not made by man's hand. There's a leak in this old building, and my soul has got to move. My soul has got to move. My soul has got to move. There's a leak in this old building, and my soul has got to move. Mm -hmm. It's not made by man's hand. Hallelujah. Glory. There's a leak in this old building. Woo! Glory. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. I want to thank you for that prayer and for that amazing song. We're going to bring up Arthur Michelle Kane. I'm going to allow her to share just a little bit about herself, and then she's going to go into her topic for tonight. Good evening to everyone. I'm Arthur Michelle 
Kane. I'm the inspirational author and writer of Christian Inspirational Writings. My passion, my purpose, and my mission is to inspire, encourage, motivate, and uplift people of all ages everywhere and to make a positive impact on the world. What I will be speaking on tonight is the word learn. We must learn and we must be able to teach others to learn, love, and lead. Always remain humble and teachable to learn new things and be teachable to learn from others that can help you excel to the next level. You know, each letter in the word learn represents something powerful. L is less of me and more of God. See, we need more of God. We need to move ourselves out of the way and allow God to do his work in us so that we can learn and be teachable to receive the knowledge of God, to know that he has a plan for our lives. E is ego check. No room for feelings. We have to get rid of the egos. Be humble to help your fellow man and your community. Egos can hinder you from being the best version of you that you can be. Egos can cause you not to help anyone or help your community because your ego Ego can make you think that you are above everyone else. But we need to get rid of those egos and get out of our feelings and let's get to work on bettering our community because our community needs us. A, the ancestral anointing, faith and prayers of those that came before us. Our ancestors' faith and prayers are what is keeping us going. Their anointed prayers and faith is what is blessing us to do what we do. Aura is resilience. Your willingness to not give up. Pushing past all that comes your way. The true meaning to overcome. In this season, we can't give up. We have to push past all the struggles and the challenges that comes our way. Step out on faith and move out of our comfort zones to learn, love, and lead. We are overcomers and we will not be defeated. In next level in God, know you have a purpose. You were not dropped out of the sky. When you move to the next level in God, you work your purpose. You don't, don't be lazy and sit on it, but work the purpose and the mission that God has given to you to do. You, like Miss Angela would always say, you were not just dropped out of the sky, but you are here for a purpose. And that purpose is to heal the city in heels. Go to our communities and help our people. And you by the families and the and the entire community. There has been too much violence and fighting in our communities. And now is the time for us to get off of our stool of do nothing and we need to go out and impact the world with unity, love, and positivity. In my conclusion, I just want to inspire and encourage somebody 
to walk in your purpose. Love one another. Get off the stool of do nothing. And go out in the community and into the world to bring back the unity and the love. Get rid of those egos. You can't think that you are above everybody else. And that you don't need nobody. But we need each other. So get rid of those egos. And let's get together and help each other to bring back the love, the strength, and the unity in our communities. So let's go, y'all. And let's heal the city in heels. Again, I am author Michelle Kane. You can find me on Facebook on Authorist Michelle Kane. You can find me on Instagram at Christian Inspirational Writings. You can also find me on Instagram on Christian Inspirational News. And my book is on Instagram, Amazon, and also uh, Barnes and Noble and Books a Million. Thank you, Miss Angela, for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you for coming on and sharing. Um, I, I, I truly appreciate it. And, and I, I, I am I oftentimes remind people that we didn't just get dropped out of the sky, that Jeremiah 29 and 11, he tells us that he had a plan for us to prosper us, for us to be in good health, for us to have hope in the future. And I know that his word is not going to return to him. Lord. So I'm not going to stop telling people that I want them. I want them to get it. I want them to know that they have purpose. I want them to know that they wouldn't just drop out of the sky and they waiting on something to come down out the sky. It ain't going to happen. I'm reminded by that scripture, what? Psalms 121, what this book is based on. Say, look to the hills from which my help coming. You know, we mm -hmm. oftentimes look into the hills and thinking something's going to come out them hills, but ain't nothing coming. Everything you need is already on the inside of you. He said, well, he breathed that breath of life in you. Huh? He breathed a part of you in you. He, he, he breathed a part of him in you. So he's in you. He is you. And when we get that, I tell you, we'll be so much powerful. I tell you, I'm glad. I'm glad he woke me up. <laughs> I'm glad he woke me up. But I want to thank you. I want to thank you for stopping by and sharing with us on tonight. Um, we're going to move to our next speaker. Um, Daphne is supposed to be our next speaker, but she's probably running a little late because of the time difference. So I'm going to bring up um, this this lady right here. It's very special and dear to me. Um, some, some years ago, a couple of years ago, um, she lit a fire under me. I had posted something on Facebook and she saw it. She was not pleased with it. And she immediately came in my box. And when I tell you she lit one up under me, she let me have one real good, but it was in a good way. And it was, it was, it was, it, when I tell you she disciplined me like a parent should, she lit a fire under me and I have not looked back. I've not looked back and I think I remember that call also well. She was preparing. Um, she was actually preparing to get ready to go to Africa and then the pandemic hit. And I tell you, during this pandemic, God opened so many doors and what she spoke into my life that day on that phone call lit a fire under me and I've not looked back. And she often we oftentimes reference each other as mother and daughter. Um, she calls me her spiritual, one of her spiritual daughters. And I always call her my spiritual mom because she pours into me um, and she don't have to. But um, we were connected and I know that it was a divine connection. And um, I truly thank God for her. I'm an amazing woman of God, um, an author, um, motivational speaker, life coach, business coach, you name it. This lady wears so many hats. I, I, I don't want to, to mess up her introduction. I want her to do her own introduction because she can tell you about her better than I can. But I tell you, she's amazing. And I'm going to bring her up and allow her to share. She's going to be sharing about lead tonight um, because she's definitely a leader. Um, so without further ado, author Samantha J. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you, Angela, for having me on tonight. Um, this is an awesome opportunity, and I thank God for Angela because she's always pouring into people. And when I saw that, 
I just knew that God just had plans for her in her life. And when God tell you to tell somebody something, you do it. So I, I, I told her, I said, I hope you don't mind, but I got some things to say. And she was very open to it. And I just thank God for her, for letting me be a part of this project because it is time to learn, lead. It's time to love, learn, and lead. And this is what we're trying to do, heal the city in heels. I'm author Samantha J. And I am an author of several books, also several anthologies. I'm also a life coach with business and career. I am also a motivational speaker. And um, I just thank God for being here tonight to share with you guys more about being a leader. How many times do we realize or do we think we fit into the word leader, lead? I want you to think about that for a minute. Does lead fit in your vocabulary or describe you? Does leader describe you? And the reason why I'm asking that, because I believe in being very transparent. And the first thing a leader has to learn to do is be transparent in anything and everything they do. And I can remember back several years, I worked for a corporate company as well. And I was always told that I wasn't leader material because I was so forward, because I was so direct and people couldn't accept me for who I was. So I would never be a good leader. But the devil is a liar because I kept praying and asking God, groom me to be who you want me to be, not what man says you can be. And a lot of us and a lot of you who are listening probably don't see yourself as a leader. And you have to be transparent as a leader, but you also have to, leaders have to be humble like Moses. Moses was the most humble man I know. And now Moses being very humble, he was also there facing everything on earth that he was dealing with. He continued to be humble because of his humility. He did marvelous work and leaders would do well to exercise humility and follow the example of Moses. I would go to Deut Deuteronomy 28, the 37th chapter. It says, and thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, a byword among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. And when I was told back in the day that I would never be a good leader, I went to the word, I prayed, but I also picked up a mentor several mentors, because that's very important. Mentorship is important because as we heard last night from Pastor Victoria, we should all be a mentor, but we should all have a mentor. Even now where I am in my life, I still have a mentor and we all need a mentor because it could be better in the community. And you can find this in your community, your job, or even in your churches. There are so many young people in need of some guidance in their future. So each one needs to teach one. And so it's very important for mentorship, but it's also that humility where it steps in, where you have to understand that I might not be where I need to be to lead, but I need to be guided and, and nourished in order to do so because everyone out here needs leadership skills. And I say that because even if you don't lead an organization or lead anything, you're always able to lead your family members, your people in the church, the youth. You're able to pull in and pour in to someone who needs to be led. So I'm going to get a little bit about that. But when I look at lead, I look at love first. We have to be able, in order to be great leaders, we got to love people. We got to love what we do. We got to love God and, and allow him to pour into us. So that's the first thing in lead that we have to do. The next thing we have to do is the E, endure. Being a leader is not always easy. It's sacrifices. It can be overwhelming at times, but once you learn to endure, you can be that great leader. That A is act. Don't sit with a thought in your mind. Anytime you got God gives you something to do, you don't need to sit there and ponder over it or wonder if I'm good enough. Can I do this? 
you start acting on it. You start learning. You start taking courses. You start having mentors. You start reaching out to people who can help you, groom you in order to act in your divine space of where you're supposed to be. D is develop. A lot of times at leader, as leaders, we don't feel like we need to have development. Even with all the degrees that you may have, you still need some type of development. Degrees are good and they're, they're great to have, but how are you going to develop what you need to help others in order to lead them? So I'm going to explain to you four good things in leadership or the good things that you need in leadership. First of all, it's people. It's the four P's in leadership, people. Let's face it, without people, there's nothing to lead. Without your congregation, there is no one to lead. Without your family, there is no one to lead. Without people, we're just walking in directions by ourselves. So somewhere along the way, through it all, it's really easy to forget about people. And especially when it comes to leading in ministry, it's, it's that funny. The very reason we begin the journey can eventually become more of a nuisance than anything. Remind yourself daily that people matter, that God cares about people, the difficult people, the smart people, the fun people, the church people are all loved by God and in need of leading. So remind yourself of the people by looking to your leader. Heal the city in heels. The second P is priorities. Good leaders know their priorities. What's yours? Think about it. What's your priorities? I know the typical response and what it's supposed to be, but really, what are your priorities? Try this. Write down three things that have dominated your thinking today and three things that have dominated your time. That's a good indicator of your priorities. If you don't like the answers, now is the time to put some new things in place. Now is the time to say no to some good thing so you can say yes to the right things. Good leaders have a way of knowing and sticking to their priorities. Heal the city and heal. The third, the third P is pro productivity. Productivity, we don't talk about it a lot in leadership circles, but do you know what a leader has to do in the end of the day? Get stuff done. How productive are you? Do you get done what you say you're going to get done? I'm not talking about being held captive by a calendar. I'm talking about getting done what needs to be done at home, at church, wherever you are. Do you get stuff done? There are countless ways to be sure you are being productive. You can make a to-do list, find a good to-do list app, or just maintain a good calendar. But at the end of the day, do we have to get through processes of writing things down? Even at my age, I have to write it down, but I want to be productive for that day. And in order to be a leader, you got to learn to be productive in order to lead other people to be productive. So visit those things and return to those things that can make an impact to help somebody. Heal the city and heals. The last and final P is progress. Leaders ultimately move people and their organization in a direction. If you aren't seeing progress in people you lead or the church you're leading, you aren't leading them at all. A lot of us get into leadership in churches and communities and different things just to have the name, I'm a leader, I'm in charge. But leadership requires the movement take place. In order for you to be a leader, you got to show people you're willing to get down and dirty and do the work yourself. Now, don't get me wrong. It won't happen all the time. And there's many times you even move backwards. But ultimately, ultimately, the progress is the most important thing. Progress will make you look different and at different points in your leadership. But it always involves reaching people. So heal the city and heals. So in the end, we have some, some, some type of leadership skills. We all have leadership skills. We all should learn to love, endure, act, and develop someone into leadership. And 
be able to build and heal the community. And when we can build and heal our world, we can band together and heal the city and heal. I'm author Samantha J. And you can find me on Facebook under author Samantha J. Or Samantha Joyner Jackson. I am on Instagram at JYNR Sam. I am also my website. You can find my books at www.authorsamanthaj. You can always reach out to me at authorsamanthaj at gmail.com. I thank you for this opportunity. I hope you continue to heal the city in heels. And I wish Angela to continue her fight and what she's doing and be able to continue doing what she's doing because she's doing an awesome job. And I thank you guys and all of you be blessed tonight. I am muted. I forget. I forget, y'all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I, I just wanted to, to chime in on one thing you said. I often tell people that leaders produce leaders. I, I, I'm, I'm reminded by I'm reminded by that 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 saying that says um, like a like a like a tree planted by the river. When when you produce fruit, your your, your fruit got to go out and produce more Amen. fruit. You can't you can't just exactly. stay on that tree because if it stay on that tree, this is gonna begin to rot. So we expect exactly. our leaders to produce leaders to produce leaders so that they can continue to grow that circle. Because if you are a great leader, the people that you grow as leaders, they're going to continue to grow and they're going to still be under you. You're still yeah. going to be their leader, but they're yeah. going to be able to, it's going to be able to fall. We oftentimes wonder why our circle is not growing. Are you a leader that's producing leaders? That's right. Because if you are producing leaders, your circle should be growing. Circle that's right. Should be growing. That's right. But I want to thank you um, so much for being a part of this project and coming on and sharing tonight. Um, you definitely have been an inspiration to me. Thank you for what you do. Continue to do what you do. I love you. Be blessed. Love you. Thank you. We have next um, Daphne Hampton. Um, I told you I knew it had to be time difference. Um, Daphne um, is joining us. Um, she is from Germany, but I think right now she may be still here in the States. Um, in Texas. Um, I'm super excited about her coming on and sharing. I tell you, um, she is an example of that word that she's going to be talking about tonight um, because I've never met this lady in person, face to face. But I tell you, I can feel her love every time we come in the inbox or we have a phone conversation or an interview, whatever she's doing. I can feel her energy and I fell in love with her. She adopted me as her little sister and I, I'm definitely honored to have her on and sharing tonight. Um, I'm going to bring her up and allow her to share just a little bit about herself and then allow her to jump into her topic. Hi, everyone. And thank you guys for having me on the show. And yes, there is a time difference. I was thinking that I was coming on about an hour later. So <laughs> I was ready. I was in place. I was when I saw you, I was getting all my stuff together. But anyway, I'm here now and I'm happy to be here. Angela, thank I you. love you. I did adopt you as my little sister. You are an amazing, phenomenal woman. And I feel the same way about you. The feeling is mutual. The projects that you have allowed me the opportunity to share in has been ultimate great just phenomenal and i just want to thank you for the opportunity i i would be remiss not to acknowledge all of the other beautiful women that have been a part of this project i thank you guys for your zeal your work your living i know that doing this kind of stuff is not always convenient but it's needed and i salute the women that have I stepped up to the plate and doing what they need to do and that's basically what my topic is going to be about tonight love Love is such a vast emotion, you know, and there's so many different types of love. And I wanted to go deeper and dive into it, but we'll have more time for that. But tonight we're going to talk about the one love that's the greatest love of all, and that's the agape love. Agape love is the higher level of love to, that you can offer. It's giving without ex expectations of returning anything in return or receiving anything in return. Offering agape love is a division to spread love in any circumstance, including destructive situations. And that's amazing because when God started speaking to me, when I first got reassurance of my salvation, the thing that he talked to me the most was, can you love in spite of? Can you love in spite of? It's easy to love 
your mother and your father, your kids and all your friends and all your yummy, yummy people that are around you. But can you love those ones that have lied on you, betrayed you, um, been in domestic violence, been the victim of domestic violence, you know, been in um, the middle of um, just things that are messy and not good. Can you love those in spite of, can you pray for people that despitefully use you? That's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about that type of love. And Angela always teaches with acronyms. So I had an acronym for love. And today my acronym for love is the L, living. How many of you know that just to be alive and breathing is an amazing thing? We take for granted that we can... We take for granted that we are living. And my thing is I always say, I don't want to, I want to, I want to be living when I die. I don't want to die. And I'm already just, just trans, just existing. I want to be living and loving when I transition to everlasting life. The O in love for me was uh, on God's promises, living and believing and trusting and leaning on God's promises. He has promised us that he will never forsake us. That's how much he loved us. He sent his only begotten son because he loved us. He he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So we can lean on his promises that he has us here. We have a purpose. We have divine um, purpose and we have to own our purpose on purpose. And we have to live in the moment and live in the now and just know that no matter how bad the situation is, we can lean on his promises. And he says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I don't have to fear no evil because thy rod and thy staff is there to comfort me. He says in Psalms, you know, anything that concerns you, I'm perfecting it. So we just got to lean on his promises. In a time of trouble, he will hide you in his tabernacle. That's the love of God. And we just got to believe in that. The next one is V validated by God. You know, so many of us, we walk around day in and day out. We want validation. We want someone to just tell us, oh, Daphne, you're yummy. Oh, Daphne, you're great. Oh, Daphne, you're smart. Oh, Daphne, you know, you are destined for greatness. Oh, Daphne, you were supposed to be a minister and you're supposed to be on this show. Just like all the sweet things that Angela said that bless my heart. But we don't have to be validated by man because God validated you before he placed you in your mother's womb. Somebody need to write that down and repeat that you are already you are already validated and what your purpose is and what you're supposed to do. It's going to happen. You're going to do it. Just walk in it. And the next thing is the E. Everlasting love is your gift. Everlasting love is your gift for loving on this side and for loving in spite of and for believing that God loved us so much that he gave us his son. He sent him here in a male man form so that we can go boldly before the throne of God. And we don't need bullocks and oxen and blood to go in a priest one time a year to go before the throne of God for us. It's already been done. The veil has been ripped. He loved us so much that he changed some things around and modified some things that we can have everlasting life. So that's my acronym for love. Now we want to talk about healing our cities in heels. It just took me back to a story in Matthew, one of my favorite stories in Matthew. We're talking about love. We're talking about women. We're talking about sisters. We're talking about women with heels on. That's what, you know, when you put on a pair of heels, you just have a whole different swag. Your whole demeanor just changed when you have on some heels. You walk with confidence. You walk with, you know, fearlessness. You know, you walk with that you know, I know that I can do anything. I can change the world with these heels on. So when Angela told me about the conference and it was heal, I'm talking about heal the city in heels. We're talking about some bad sisters. We're talking about some sisters that's not afraid to show up and show out. And it reminded me of these sisters, and I call them sisters, in Matthew 27 and 55. And I'm going to read that scripture for you. Matthew 27 and 55 says, that many, put a pen right there, it says many women were there watching from a distance. They had followed Jesus from from Galilee to care for his needs. I'm going to repeat that. It says many women were there. Many could have been 20, 100, 200, 1,000, but it just says the word many means 
just that a lot of women were there. But this is the part that gets me about this story. That was Matthew 27 and 55. Many women were there watching from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee to care for his needs. They loved him. They followed him. How many of you know women will stick around to the last, helping somebody, being there for somebody? They want to see what's going on. But it said many women was there. Well, then over in Matthew 28 and 5, it says that there were only two women there. And that was the two Marys that got their names written in the book of in the in the in the Bible, in the book of life. It was only two women there. I asked the question, what happened to those other women that they didn't stay to see what happened to our Savior, Jesus? But anyway, y'all can go back and read it. I want y'all to go back and read it. It's a wonderful story. It talks about how the women got to the tomb. And when they got to the tomb, there was an angel there and the angel had rolled the stone away. But when the angel rolled the stone away, Jesus wasn't there in the G in the in the angel looked at the women and spoke directly to the women, to the two women that were there. The other women had gone. Maybe they had to rush home and cook. Maybe they had to pick their children up. Maybe their husband didn't want them to go. All these different things. But these two women were there and they were able to um, see the miraculous work of Jesus. Actually, the angel told them that Jesus wasn't there. They were there looking for him and, they, and, the, and the angel gave them instructions how many of you know when God gives us instructions, we have to move and not just move, but move quickly. Well, in the word, it says that the women, that, that when the angel gave them the instructions to go tell the disciples that Jesus was going to meet them in Galilee, the, the two women were frightened. The word says they were afraid. But guess what happened? They were afraid, but they still went quickly in joy. I'm going to tell you today. Sometimes you got to love, you got to be afraid. Sometimes you got to do things that God has told you to do. Sometimes you got to do it afraid, but in joy. And that joy part says that I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's going on, but I'm going to love through this. And I'm going to go and do what God say do, because I know that there's joy and there's a gift on the other side of me being afraid. So anyway, story goes on to say that the women went quickly. They went afraid and in joy, but halfway there, Halfway there, they got a chance to meet Jesus. They met Jesus halfway on their assignment. And I'm telling you, when you release love in any situation, God has the responsibility to show up because he is love. When you release love in any situation, I don't care what it is, God has the responsibility to show up because he is love. And the story goes on to say that the women met Jesus Jesus spoke directly to them, told them to, to, he told them, fear not, don't be afraid, fear not, don't be afraid. So sometimes you're going to go in fear, but then when you get to the other side, Jesus is going to speak to you and say, because you've loved in spite of, because you follow my instructions, because you did what I asked you to do, because you were the one on your job being the light when everyone else was being nasty. Because when your friends talked about you, instead of you going back and being messy, you said, I'm not going to pour oil on something that's already hot. This is what love does. Love is not always convenient. It's not always easy, but you can always win with love. I truly believe that love is the key that unlocks the door to the kingdom and loving in spite of whatever you've been through. I'm a lady you're looking at. I've been through divorce more than once. I could be bitter. My I was uh, had beautiful weddings and the vows. Of, I will love you to death do us part. I could be very bitter. I could be walking around here and hating on me and not want to speak to anybody and just being bitter. But I choose to love in spite of because it brings me joy when I, I've been all over the world. And the one thing that I found that's universal is love, loving their chi people, loving their children, you know, marriage, love. I've no, I every everywhere that I go, anywhere that I'm planted, when I release love. I get the gift of joy. And when you release love, you get the gift of joy. Anyway, back to these women. The two Marys, they stayed until the end. They got their names written. The other women didn't. I want to say to you today, don't be on the sideline. Get in the game. All of us have gifts. All of us have a genius. 
All of us have something that we were a purpose to do. Wherever you are in life, whatever you are doing, wherever you are, you are on a post. You are guarding that post and you should be guarding it with a smile, with love, with the love of Christ. Love walk, love walking was Jesus. Are you, are you walking in love? Are you love walking? That's my prayer that I can be love walking. Just a big ball of love walking. I'll tell you about a situation that happened to me the other day. A young woman came into the facility where I was and she was crying. She was late for her appointment and she was just crying, crying, crying. She says, I'm late. I'm late. And I said, don't worry about it. I said, you know, it's okay. We're going to get you in. She was coming in to get her COVID test. And the reason why she, she said, the reason why I was late is because my husband died and she was waiting for the coroners to, to remove his body. Now, mind you, has she walked up to my station and I was ugly to her and I was like, get out of my face. You someone, but I'm just saying you're late. You should have been on time. No, we can't get you in. Didn't even look up and look at her and show some compassion and empathy. Can you imagine what she would have went through? But because immediately I felt her presence before I even looked up at her, I felt her spirit. I know she needed love. And I'm just so happy that I was that I was able to offer her love and take her to the side and just stop what I was doing. Because because sometimes love will have you stop in your tracks and tend to to the situation at hand and God will work out all the rest. I was over there. I was talking to the young lady. She was telling me all these beautiful things. She said my husband had COVID and she said, um, I went and took the vaccine and she said he promised me that he was going to do it and he didn't take the vaccine and he promised he was going if she went first that he would go back and take it after she took it and once she took it he reneged on the deal he didn't go back and get the vaccine and anyway he was in the house with COVID she had gotten her room because she didn't want to get COVID the day before she went back and she checked the mailbox and he had a box in the mailbox he asked her to open the box and it was a diamond ring they were coming up on their five-year anniversary next month. And he said to her, I got this early because I'm not sure if I'm going to be around to give it to you for our five-year anniversary. So I wanted you to have it today. And he died the very next day. We're talking about love in your position. We're talking about being that, that love source that people need at your jobs, at your churches, at your schools, wherever you are. You have to be walking in love and you have to be love walking. Another story I want to share with you, and then I'm not going to hold you long, is the story about Joseph in Genesis where Joseph, Joseph's brother, brothers sold him off to slavery. And 13 years later, there was a famine and God had raised Joseph up. Joseph had been through a lot of suffering and pain. But God had raised him up that he was second in command in Egypt. And his brothers came to him. And it says that Joseph wept and he hugged his brothers. He wasn't bitter. Even though they had did him so wrong, he still walked in love. He was love walking. He was able to feed his family and save his family from the famine. And that's the type of love that we have to have, that agape love, loving in spite of. And I'm not saying that you have to let somebody walk all over you or be a doormat for somebody, because I'm also reminded of the story where it says Jesus in the midst of them crucifying him. This had to be love as well. He said, forgive them for they know not what they do. But the key ingredient in that was when he got up, the Bible says he got up with all power in his hands. When he got up with all power in his hands. He didn't get up and try to go defeat Pilate and them who had crucified him in the first place. He went on to Galilee to meet the disciples and be about his father's business and to being the savior and the, the walking in love, love walking, God, person, entity, divine one that he was called to be. And that's what we have to be. Doesn't mean that you let somebody walk all over you. Doesn't mean that you bring somebody into your life that's going to be ugly and beating you and abusing you and, and mistreating you. But what it does mean is I can love you from afar. I can love you from a distance. I can love you with a long handle spoon. But the key ingredients is I love you still. I can pray for you. I can wish you well. I can want nothing but the best for you. 
but I don't have to let you back into my immediate circle to harm me or anybody close to me again. So I hope this has been a blessing to you guys. I hope you guys will ponder on this. I hope you guys will be like the two women that got their name written, Mary and Mary, that got their names written in the Bible. Make sure your name, your legacy, what a wonderful legacy for your legacy to be love. Isn't that something? Jesus' legacy is love. When the adulterous woman was brought to him, he handled that situation in love. He says, let he who has cast the first stone, let he who has cast, no, let he who, who is without sin cast the first stone. Everybody walked away. He, he handled that situation in love. The Samaritan woman that came to him, he knew she had been with many different men. It didn't, he didn't care. He loved people right where they were. He loved her in that situation right where she was. And that's what we have to do. You know, we say we're Christians. Christian only means to be Christ-like. And Christ-like is to walk in love. None of us are perfect. None of us can point the finger at the other. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. But we can all walk in love and choose to love in spite of whatever this world has handed us. Because we realize that the gift is everlasting life. So I'm gonna leave you with the full with the with the acronym before I go again, and then I'm out. Love living. Appreciate your living. Don't die just existing. Live your life. Write your books. Tell your stories. It's so much potential in the graveyard because people weren't living. They didn't write their books. They didn't sing their songs. They didn't tell their poems. They didn't start that business. I need you to be living. The O. On God's promises. You can lean on God's promises. He will not fail you. He says before one period of his word go void, heaven and earth will pass away. So you can live on his promises. You can stand on them. Validation. Validated by God. My sisters and brothers, you have already been validated. Me and my mom were talking earlier about how people put people in categories. You can't categorize people. God, God is not a respecter of people from the billionaires to the poorest of the poor couldn't get rid of this COVID and all the other stuff that's going on in this world. God validated you. It's not about how much money you have, what house you live in, what car you drive. God loves you in your place right now. You've already been validated. And when it's your time to rise and your time to shine, God will flip the switch. And before you know it, like he always say. The head will be the tail and the tail will be the, be the head. The first will be the last and the last will be first. So just do what you're supposed to do. Show up. Keep moving. You've already been validated. And the E in love, everlasting love is your gift. Think about the E. Every time you see an E now, you think about it. Everlasting love is my gift. Everlasting life is my gift. God loved me so much that he switched some things and modified some things around so that I could have everlasting life. And because I know that I have everlasting on the other side, I want to walk in love. I want to be a peacemaker. I want to be the one that can bring joy to a sad situation because, because my God did it for me. And that's it for me on love, you guys. Amen. Amen. Um, that was amazing. I, I thank you. Um, love covers a multitude of sin. Love draws. Yes, love is meek. Love is kind. Yes, love yes, is patient. Yes. You know, yes. you touched on a lot of a, a lot. You know, and I tell people, love is an action word. It's an action I, word. I shouldn't. I, I when I walk in a room, it, it, it I should exhibitate love. Look at this. You know, I, I can say all day long that I love you, but if I'm not operating in that, <laughs> if you can see this note, the first note says. Love is an action word. <laughs> <laughs> I told you we connected for a reason. God is good. Yes, yes, yes God is yes. good. He know what we need when we need it. Um, yes. So I definitely thank you for sharing on tonight. Um, please, before you leave, I need you to share with individuals how they can follow you on your platform, how they can reach out to you. I'm author Daphne Hampton. You can reach, you can find my books on my website at DaphneHampton.com. I have a um, phenomenal show called The Most Daphne Show. 
Um, we have a, the most definitely show page on Facebook. You can reach me there. We come on every Wednesday at one o'clock Central Standard Time, eight o'clock in Germany. I live in Germany. I am in in the States right now, but um, my heart is my heart is here at home. But my heart is there in Germany. I always say I wish I could be two places at one time. Um, and my Instagram is at Daphne Writes. And I'm here for you. If you need to be loved on, I got you. <laughs> well, I definitely want to thank you for stopping by. I so we're going to have a song. Thank you. I love you. Be blessed. We're going to have another song from um, Pastor Tamala. And then the next voice you hear will be that of Minister Kim Rice. So I'm going to bring Tamala up. Hallelujah. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy. All together wonderful to me. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. You're Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. You are our Savior, you're our God. Here I am to bow down, here I am to bow down, here I am to worship, you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together wonderful, all together awesome. You're our God. Here I am to bow down. I'm bowing down. Because you are, you are amazing, God. Here I am to worship. I call to worship you. I give my all, my all, my all, my all to you, Lord. You are everything. Everything to me, you always providing and making ways out of no way. I give you praise for you are God, and I love you. Yes, I love you, Lord. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to worship. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. You are everything. Everything to me. I love you, Lord. I love you. I love you. There is no other one I love. I love you, Lord. 
You gave everything to us. You gave your life to us, Lord. I love you. I love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I want to thank you um, for sharing again. Um, <laughs> so my next speaker, um, this lady, um, y'all, she, she's special to me as well. Um, <laughs> she's one of the ministers at my church. Um, even in my absence, uh, I'm still a member of um, Pleasant Hill um, Baptist Church in Belton, South Carolina. Um, Kim <laughs> she's amazing y'all she's over um she was over the youth ministry when i attended um pleasant hill and she gave me the opportunity to work under her work alongside her assist her however you want to label it but she gave me the opportunity to pour into those babies um through um um daughters of um i forgot the name of it kim don't kill me um, <laughs> King's Daughters, I think, um, but Awana was one of the things that, um, Daughters of the King, thank you, Holy Ghost, Daughters of the King was the name of it, um, but she gave me the opportunity to um, be a teacher in Awanas and to share um, with those babies and to pour into those babies, um, and, and, and that began to grow my spiritual life, I, I truly believe, um, that it helped me become the person that I am today. So I'm honored um, to have uh, Minister Kim Rice here today to share with us. Um, she's going to be sharing a, a broad topic, um, healing our city and hills, because we got to get back to that community and that village mentality that y'all often hear me talk about across my various platforms, because we we gotten away from it. Everybody get offended if you say something to their child. So we got to get back to not being so offended. We, we got to get back to not thinking that we've learned so much to we can't be taught no more or we're not teachable. We got to get back to showing love and loving our brothers and sisters as we love ourselves. And that's how we become effective leaders and are able to grow and develop leaders. So I'm excited. I'm excited. Um, I'm going to move out the way. I'm going to allow her to come up and share just a little bit about herself before she dives into her topic. And then after our keynote speaker, I'm going to allow Shaneria. Um, Shaneria has jumped on. Um, she is one of the co-authors um, to this prayer book. Um, she got up 5 a.m., 121 days, maybe 91 days um, with us and shared with us. Um, came on to the project, willingly came on to the project and um I'm honored to have her in tonight, but I'm going to move out the way and allow Kim to come up. And then after Kim come, we're going to have um, Shaneria. Welcome, Minister Rice. I don't know if you froze. I can't hear you. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. <laughs> can't hear you.
I can hear like some background noise, but I can't hear you. Did you just say hello? I think I heard that, but it's I don't know what's going on. You may have to exit out and come back in. You may have to exit out and, and come back in. We're going to see if we can get, I don't know what's going on, but um, we're going to see if we can get um, Kim back in. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Um, I'm going to see if we can get Kim back on, but while we're um, waiting to see if we can get Kim back on, I want to bring Shaneria up. Yeah, we, 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 we don't stop. We keep moving. Um, because that's the enemy's job is to distract us and, and to keep us sidetracked. But we keep moving. Um, I'm going to bring Shaneria on. Um, for those that do not know who Shaneria is, Shaneria is the L, um, the Learn, and um, the L3 project. Um, when I invited her to come on to the project, um, she willingly came on and 5 a.m., Prayer is what we did for 121 days from February 1st until June 1st. Um, just trusting and believing um, God was going to do exactly what he said he was going to do. And when I tell you, he showed up and showed out. But during this time, we experienced a lot. Um, we lost some lives. We Things were just happening. And it just seemed like as soon as I said yes, and I'm just speaking for me, as soon as I said yes to this project and to to God's will, it seemed like all hell broke loose in my life. And I, I, I'm, I'm talking about all hell broke loose. Even, even this week, y'all would not believe the, 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 the warfare that I've been under. I've been under so much attack. Y'all, I've, I've, in five days, I probably slept three hours. <laughs> wow. Three hours. In five days, three hours. My sister get up and go to work. <laughs> she was like, you've been asleep. No. I ain't been asleep, but y'all, I have not been tired. I've not been, um, I, I, I've been alert. I've been, God has just been moving and I just been allowing him to do exactly what he's doing. Um, I'm going to, um, let you, um, share just a little bit about yourself and why you chose to join this project. And I think Kim is, um, trying to make her way back in. So I'm going to bring her up and allow her to share. But, um, this is Shaneria, you guys. I know y'all probably been wondering who is these other two people that's a part of this project. So this is Shaneria. Um, Shaneria, just share just a little bit. And then we're going to see if Kim is back on. Okay. Hey guys, how y'all doing? Angela, thank you for always uh, having me on. Um, I'm Shaneria, Shaneria Osborne. Um, I'm a wife, a mother, and a grandmother. Um, Angela um, texted me and asked me to come on and um, on the prayer um, call with her every morning at 5 a.m. And that was something that, I mean, I pray. But that was something that I never did, um, getting up at a certain time, um, praying. But when Angela asked me that, um, I knew that was some that was from God because I knew that's what God wanted me to do because all the things that I was going through, um, uh, especially with my son. So when I became when I started praying and getting on a prayer call every morning um, with Angela and the other. Um, prayer partner it starts shifting things for me and and not even that when Angela said something about learn that that right there taught me a lot of things because sometimes you can't always be a lead you know sometimes you can't all you know you don't know everything so learning 
I mean, that just taught me a, a lot because sometimes you have to bag away and listen. Sometimes you got to learn from other women that don't been through some things. And sometimes it be women that's younger than you that you can learn from. So when Angela came, you know, with me with all that, it fell in place because I knew that's what God wanted me to do. So I really Amen. appreciate it. I appreciate it. Amen. Amen. And when when I when he dropped this project in my spirit, I see Kim is back on. So I'm going to bring her up. But I want to share this really quick because um, I tried to assign each one of us something. But as we begin to go into prayer, I think it was like day 60. Um, maybe 60, 61, 62, but it was around midway. He he, he started dealing with us. He said, you need to learn too. You need to be loving too. You're not just focused on one area. Right. It's all three for a reason <laughs> because we all, we constantly need to be teachable. That's right. We constantly need to be showing love. And we constantly need to be the leader. We need to be leading by example. True. So I said, okay, Lord, I thank you because now I could really truly see how this, this project was coming together because in the beginning, y'all, I didn't understand. I didn't understand what he was wanting me to do and understand exactly. I just said, okay, Lord, I'm just going to do it. And sometimes you just have to humble yourself and be willing and be that willing vessel, even when you don't understand. Because this journey that I've been on, no, I've not understood all of this, y'all. I'm telling you still some sometime when I hear myself on live and I go back and listen to these lives, I'd be shocked at some of the stuff I'd be no say. I'd be like, is that Angela? But yeah, God is doing some amazing things and I'm super excited. I'm going to bring Kim back up. I'm going to see if um we can get her on because I know she must have a powerful message on tonight because the enemy don't want us to hear this. Good evening again. Hey, hey, hey. Can you hear me? You can hear me? I can hear you. Yes, oh, we can oh, hear oh, you. Oh, <laughs> hey, man. Well, I'm going to move out the way. Um, me and Shanira, you're going to move out the way. We're going to give you the platform um, to share. And then um, we're going to end this. But um, okay. thank you once again um, for coming and sharing. Um, you can share who you are before or you can do it after, however you are led to do it. Okay. But well, the floor is yours. All righty. I am Minister Kim Rice from the Pleasant Hill Baptist Church, as Angela has already told you. I was um, youth director at the church. Now I am um, assistant to my pastor and also women's ministry leader, helping and leading women. Um, and uh, that is my goal is to make sure women succeed. And I also help uh, in domestic violence and assault on women on my job. But I wanted to talk to us tonight about knowing that we have a freedom in Christ. In order for us to heal our city in hills, being the women that we are, we got to know that we got the freedom ourselves. Um, so he gives us freedom and it comes from God. And when we get that freedom and have true freedom to do what he has called us to do, we have to take a good hard look at ourselves first. We got to look at I got to look at me. You got to look at you. Because God loves each of us. He always has and always will. He proved his love for you and me by Jesus being on that cross. And we got to just take a good look at self sometimes. Even though we look at others, but we got to look at self sometimes. What are the negative behaviors that we carry or that we demonstrate each and every day or each and every week? You know, have I complained? Have I acted selfishly to myself? Have I lost my temper to others? You know, have I failed to witness and do and say what God has asked me to say and do? Am I too busy for myself? Am I worried all the time? You know, have I missed the opportunity to just give a hug to somebody? You know, and our list can go on and on. But God, we have to ask God to reveal to us, you know, what's the root of my negative behavior? Do I have that negative behavior? You know, what do I suffer from? Do I lack faith, stubbornness, laziness, rebellion? You know, am I selfishness? Do I even have pride? You know, insecurities and fears. We have to agree that all our negative behavior and the motives behind our action is transgressions that God calls sin. You know, I like to use the example of um, skiing, going skiing. I know some of us have tried it. Some of us too scared to try it. But, you know, when you go, they always start you out on a little slope called the bunny slope. 
This is for the beginners. This is for those just just getting out there trying to to do it. But you know, God grows us just like a slope. You know, you start that bunny slope. You go the higher you, the better you get, the higher you go up. And you know, but He's always with us. He ain't gonna take you on no adventure that He is not gonna be there with you. And you know, we may arrive at the starting point being weak, being weary, you know, apprehensive, but He provides that gentle instruction that's going to take us to whatever path he has set for us. You know, God never intends to leave us in that place where so many decide to stay. You know, he don't intend for us to just come and sit down in the place I call sit and soak, you know, a place of do nothing. You know, um, I call them in church, the poo sitters, you know, they are comfortable. They do no more than what they're best at doing. That's just sit and watch. You know, if you haven't experienced, you know, just a little fear or or a touch of excitement and, you know, in the past few days or the past few weeks, you know, maybe you've been on that bunny slope too long. Maybe it's time to move, you know, in first Corinthians three and 10, um, one through 10. But in verse three, Peter talks to the people about being babes in Christ. Some of us been, you know, saved a long time, a long time. But are we still on milk and not on the solid food? Have we not progressed? Have we not moved to the meat and the steak, you know, getting in what God wants us to get in? It's time for us to get off the bunny slope. We got to get out of even at a pool. We got to get to that little two feet water, you know, being scared of being in the water. I can tell you a time me took my kids on vacation. We were in a lazy river, just two feet of water. I fell off the, the little tube and thought I was drowning. And my kids just hollering, just stand up, mama, just stand up. So, you know, it's time for us to stand up. It's time for us to walk. We got to walk in our heels. So to walk in our heels, we got to know who we are in Christ. Who are we in Christ? First of all, in 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 9, it tells us that we are fellow workers. Fellow workers. We are to work together. Promote God's business. You know, the business of saving souls. You know, we got to get out there. If we in hills, flats, whatever, we got to get out there and save souls. You know, we are God's field. You know, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. So what are you putting inside of you? You know, are you putting the word of God? Are you putting what this world has to offer? You know, so what you put inside of you is what's going to come out. You know, we are God's building. You know, the foundation has been laid. What are you building upon your foundation? The foundation of your heart. What's, what, what does it carry? What is your heart carrying? Is your heart carrying hateful, hatefulness? Is it calling, you know, are you having too much depression? What is your heart carrying? Are you carrying the fruit of the spirit along with you each and every day? So what have you laid in your foundation? So we know that there is freedom in Christ. John 16 and 33 says, I have told you these things so that in me that you may have peace, the peace that passes all understanding. You know, when you got God's peace in you, you can do all things. This, this world, you will have many tribulations, but take heart. I have overcome the world. You know, he died on that cross for, for us, you know, and so we got to, you know, just take up that cross and follow it. And then and um, Andrew talks about learning, love. So we got to learn to love. You got to learn to love. Philippians 4 and 13 says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. And so whatever mountain you may have, whatever mountain that may come, it's not there by chance. You know, that mountain had to pass through the perfect love of God to get to you. You know, because he know that you can succeed that mountain. You know, it's up to you to believe in your heart and know that he's going to help you through it. So don't forget, don't forget God. He is the one who loves you perfectly. He's, you know, he's there to teach you. You know, we got to learn and how we learn is through his word. We got to keep his word. You know, he, he made you, you know, whatever that he made those hills, he made those stumbling blocks. He made that cliff that you're looking at, you know, you can get over it. You can climb any mountain. You know, you can go through hell and high water as long as Christ is with you. 
and we got to, you know, know that he's there, be that part, you know, for you. He's there. Your journey through life is custom made to draw you into intimacy with God. He is our creator. He wants that intimacy with us. That is the goal, you know, of all our suffering, all our joy is God. He created man for companionship. You know, when even after Adam and Eve, you know, broke that fellowship, God, he has, you know, he has pursued us. He is still pursuing us. We just have to follow. We just have to accept. You know, he's told me in his word, I was created in his image, that I was fearfully and wonderfully made. I didn't evolve by some random act of nature. Like Andrew said, we just didn't fall here. We was here. I was carefully formed, lovingly shaped by the very hand of God. You know, each and every one's got our own form, our own shape, our own mind. But it's God that's in us that make us get through it. You know, he died. Jesus died on that cross. Horizontally, you know, we're reaching God. If, um, and, you know, vertically, we're supposed to be reaching out to our neighbors. So are you reaching those neighbors that you like, those that look right? You know, we can't do that. We, we've got to reach our community. We can't look at people and decide, you know, whether I want to help that person or not. He didn't give you the choice of who you want to help. He said we ought to help all people. And so, and that's humility. You know, we got to be submitted. We got to submit to him. We got to be in submission and and to, you know, yield to God. And, and you know, we need him. And and God and our fellow, you know, following, you know, helping others, you know, because God is not neutral on any issues, especially the issue of pride. He does not sit back and allow pride to take up residence in our life, in my life, your life, anyone's life. God actually, he opposes pride. He actively opposes pride that's in you and in me. God is against pride. Why? Because. Pride blinds you to who God is. You know, the fatal flaw in the religious leaders, you know, of Jesus' day, their pride couldn't allow them to see Jesus as the Messiah. They thought they knew it all. They, they went on their own beliefs. So that pride kept them from seeing him as a true Messiah. So as we go to our community and hills, we got to embrace life. 2 Corinthians 3 and 16. But whenever anyone's turned to Lord, then the veil is taken away. When we came to Christ, that veil was taken away. When others come to Christ, their veil will be taken away. You know, all of, all of us have had our veil removed so that we can mirror the brightness, the brightly reflect of the love of God, you know, and the love that he has for her. He told us to be a mirror. We got to be like Christ, you know. We still have to show that humility. You know, if I'm complaining, pride is still in my joy. If I'm overwhelmed, pride is still in my peace. If I'm worried, pride is choking my faith. If I'm depressed, pride is blinding me of who God says I am. And I want to know everything that God says I am. So the devil has to be placed under my feet, you know, and if I'm discouraged, pride is defeating me, is, is deafening me, you know, in who God says I am. I can't hear the word of God if I'm discouraged. I got everything else going on. I can't hear nothing that God is saying to me. So I got to put all that aside. And so we got to have hope as we march in our hills, you know, and take over this community and heal our city. We got to have hope. We got to focus on God and not the things that are around us. You know, where is our focus? Where is our focus today? Is it our parents? Is it our children, our jobs, our parents, you know, spouse, our hobbies, the clothes we wear, the house we live in, the possessions we have, even our ministries that we are over or supposed to lead? You know, where is our focus? We are to love what God loves. Satan has a, you know, he's, he's out there. He wants to attempt us to coerce us into disobedience, not doing what God wants us to do. So where is our hope in the things of God? The song says, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. So where is your hope? My hope is in Christ. 
My hope is in Christ Jesus. So as we march, we got to have hope. As we heal our city, we also got to have a good attitude. Our attitude. So what is our attitude slowing us down? You know, what is it showing us when it comes to the love of Christ and showing others? You know, do our selfishness take away of the strength of our good name? My name, my good name, my name comes from Christ. My name comes from God. And what that name represents. When you see Kim, you should see Christ. You should see God in everything Kim do. You know, the Bible of the dictionary says that a Christian is one who daily life and behavior face an adversity like Christ. We are like Christ. We should live our life like Christ. And then we ask ourselves, how can God use me? How can God use me? How can God use someone that's been through divorce? Someone that's, you know, been out there on the street. Someone that has used drugs. Someone that, you know, that my life was all about me and not about God. So now, how can God use me? You know, God, look at Eve. Eve was sinning. Eve, Eve you know, she had a bad influence on her husband. You know, Sarah, she laughed at God. You know, there's plenty of women in the Bible. Rachel. You know, her dad was a cheat. You know, uh, Miriam, she was sneaky. You know, Rahab, she was a prostitute. The liar, she deduced the men. Bathsheba, she committed adultery. You know, they go on and on. Mary was an unwed mother. She birthed Jesus, but she was an unwed mother. Look how God used her. You know, Martha worried about everything and anything. You know, so we got to put that worry in our side. You know, so we have no more excuses. There's no excuses. God can use us. You know, there's no excuse. So we can walk in our hills. We can heal our city. You know, we can heal our community. We can help our young people put down these guns. You know, we can help, you know, women out here get out these abusive relationships. We can help men get out abusive re relationships. There's men, there's, there's a lot of men that are abusive, but they not saying anything. But I'm here to tell you, they're there. We can help them also. You know, it's our city. It's our community. We got to do what we need to do to heal this land, heal this nation. You know, we got to do what God is telling us to do. You know, so as God, let me give you this example. If God is offering you those two by fours on a slope going up and down below, it's nothing but rocks. And he's offering you those two by fours saying that he's going to be there with you as that slope go up. Are you going to trust him? Are you going to stay below on the ground? Are you going to walk with him? Or are you going to stay to the sideline? There's, you know, there's many things. God, God is strong. We got to know he is strong. Don't, like those two by fours, he's strong. He is loving. God is loving. No matter what we do in life, you know, as a Christian, we sin each and every day. We have to repent each and every day. Every day, every hour. We need him every minute, every second, every day. You know, every day of the hour, we need God. There's nothing we can do without him. And God is working in us. And I can tell through, through the women on this broadcast and the ones that I have made contact with, you know, God is working in each and every one of us, you know, according to his purpose, our purpose. There's a purpose for each and every every one of us. He's at work in you. He's at work in me. Um Cause I know I'm a work in progress. I know what Kim being, I know what Kim has done, but I'm still a work in pro progress. I'm not perfect. And I know he's not finished with me yet. And, and I'm glad he's not finished with me yet because I'm ready to see what he has for me. As we go on this project in healing our city and our community, as we go on this project, I can't wait to see what God has in store for us. I can't wait to see how he's going to heal the city, how he's going to heal this land and using these women in heal. I know beyond a shadow of doubt that I have the freedom in Christ. And you should know that you have the freedom in Christ. But it don't, you know, as long as we stay on the sideline, as long as we stay comfortable where we are and don't push forward, don't read his word, not follow his plans, we're going to stay where we at. But don't you want to go a little higher? Don't you want to move and see where God wants you to be? God has a plan for each and every one of us. And I just thank you, Angela, for this opportunity. God is so good. And, you know, he just has a plan for, for everybody. And I just can't wait and see what he does. I just, you know, God is good. God is so good. You know, I can go on and on, but I'm going to cut it because when I get to talking, I don't know how to stop. So, but God is good. Love you.
I can't hear you. Of course you can't hear me because I'm muted. <laughs> I muted myself. I'm sorry, y'all. I did it again. <laughs> okay, Kim, I'm sorry. But um, before you leave, I want you to share with the listeners how they can follow you, how they can support your ministry. Um, and then before we all leave, I'm going to bring each one of the speakers up and allow them to share. And then um, Chinchilla, Dr. Chinchilla J has joined us and she's going to come on. She's going to do a closing prayer and she's going to sing us out of here. And then we're going to be on our way. OK, I am Minister Kim Rice. Like I said, you can um, go to uh, our church website, the Hill Church um, dot org. That's the Pleasant Hill Baptist Church, Belton, South Carolina. Just send us a message. You know, we will reach out to you. Like I say, I'm working with the women's ministry. You can see, follow me on Facebook. My Facebook is Kim C. Rice. All right. All right. All right. Well, I'm going to bring everybody up really quick and um, we're going to allow everybody to share something inspirational really quick. I'm going to start with um, Tamala. I want you to share something inspirational and um again how individuals can reach out to you and then chinchilla is going to be the last person because she's going to pray us out and she's going to sing a song go ahead tamala dr tamala okay you can reach me by typing my name tamala lucas um in the um when you go to the urr just type my first last name that's my Name for Facebook too. If you want to uh, find me on Instagram or Twitter, you put Dr. T, the Gospelist. That's how you can find me. Um, go by my name. And then if you want to see my ministry, type in Come Home, Stop Talking About It. So that's how you can find me. All right. All right. Um, Minister Kim, you can go next. Oh, well, you, you actually just closed out, so you don't have to share again. Um, Samantha. If you would um, share really quick. Yes. Let God lead you guys. Heal the city and heals. Continue being blessed. Know that God is always on your side. And no matter what you go through or what it looks like, don't believe what it looks like. Move forward and leading and becoming leaders and grooming leaders. You can find me on Facebook, author Samantha Jackson or Samantha Jack Joyner Jackson. And uh, Instagram, J-Y-N-R Sam. Follow me. You can go on my website, www.AuthorSamanthaJ. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Um, I think Daphne has stepped away. So um, we're going to move on to Dr. Chinchilla. I want to um, thank you for stopping by. Um, she's going to close us out in prayer. And she's going to sing a song before um, she closes out in prayer. So I'm going to allow her to come forward. Um, briefly share who you are. Um, she was our keynote speaker from last night. If you missed um, last night, I want you to go over to YouTube and check out the video from last night. But we're going to allow her to um, sing a song and pray us out. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Here I am. All right. All right. Praise the Lord, everybody. I truly enjoyed uh, all of the speakers tonight and Dr. Kim, uh, amazing word from you tonight. And um, you can follow me on uh, Instagram at Princess Chinchilla. That's P R I N C E S S C H I N C H I L A on Instagram. On Facebook, I am Chinchilla Jonicia. And also on Facebook, uh, the page, my inter, uh, TV page, Mike Test Entertainment TV. That's M I C T E S T Entertainment TV, all separate words. And also uh, email is Chinchilla Jonicia at Mike test entertainment tv uh so that's how you can follow me or you can give me a call at 844-642-8378 extension 888 monday through friday 11 a.m until 7 p.m and uh i truly enjoyed this conference these two days angela uh what a blessing and i just pray that everyone that watched and everyone that will watch days to come will be blessed uh by each of the women that shared on these two days all right, so I'm going to sing a song, then I'm going to close close this out in prayer. All right, uh, Dr. Kim, she had um, uh, mentioned quite a few times in her message uh, about not complaining. And um, that just 
made me think about I won't complain because uh, we don't need to complain. If God has called us to do a work, we need to do it with no complaints. And the enemy will try to make us complain about every little thing. And we have to get past the enemy and not complain. So uh, that's the song I'm going to close this out with, because we as women, we go through many trials and tribulations and we can't complain. We got to continue to do the work and continue to fulfill what God has put in us to fulfill. All right. I've had some good days and I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days and some sleepless nights. But when I, when I look around and as I think things over, all of my good days, yes, Lord, they outweigh my bad days. And I won't complain. Sometimes the clouds hang low. And I can't even see the road. So I ask a question, Lord. Why? What so much pain? But he knows, he knows what's best for me. Hallelujah. Even when I, I cannot see. So I'll, I'll say, thank you, Lord. I'll, I'll say, thank you, Lord, and I won't complain because God, he's been so good to me, more than this so well, or you, or you could ever be, Lord, you've been good to me, and he drives he dries all of my tears away and he turns my midnights into day. So I, I lift my hands and say, thank you, Lord. And I, I won't complain because God, you've been so good. You've been real good. You've been too good. You've been better to me than I ever been to myself. You've been better to me. More than this old world. Or you, or you, or you could ever be. God, he's been good to me. And he dried, he dried. All of my, my tears away. And he turned my midnights into day. So I'll, I'll say, thank you, Lord. I, I lift my hands and I say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Through my trials, I say, thank you, Lord. Through my tribulations, I say, thank you, Lord. When I'm up, when I'm down, even if I'm level to the ground, I say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank, thank you, Lord. 
and I, I won't ever, no, no, never, I won't ever, I won't, I won't complain. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, I thank you right now in the mighty, precious name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for this two-day virtual conference, Heal the City in Hills. Thank you, God, for the visionary Angela Thomas Smith, who you gave that vision to her to bring this to light. And God, I thank you for every speaker that spoke last night and tonight, Lord God. I thank and I ask you to bless each and every one of these women and also bless Pamela, who's also uh, a part of the L3 movement with Angela and also bless Shenaria. Bless those women, God, who started out with 121 days of prayer. And God, you have turned it into what you wanted it to be. You've expanded it, God. And I thank you, God, for doing what you're doing and for Angela allowing you to lead the way. And we all must become blind so that you, God, can lead us in your spirit. God, I thank you and ask that you will bless Kim. Also bless Daphne. Samantha and Michelle, who spoke on tonight, Lord God, and those from last night, Tamala, Kimberly, Victoria, and myself, Chinchilla. Lord God, bless us with your blessings, your spiritual blessings and more spiritual anointing and spiritual gifts, Lord God. I'm not going to ask for anything materialistic because that's not what we need to be asking for. So God bless us all spiritually, that we may lead, that we may learn and that we may love. We may do it, God, the way you want us to do it. Learn, love, and lead. Only you can help us to do that, God. And I know that you will. And God, I just thank you for all that you've done these two nights. Bless these women tremendously as we carry forth what you want us to carry forth with healing our cities in hills. So God, I thank you. I thank you and I give you all the praise, all the glory and all the honor as you move and sweep your spirit through these cities that we reside in to heal these cities from the violence, from the negativity, from the hatred, from the division, and bring your people together in love. So God, I thank you right now. And I say, hallelujah, 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 and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Again, I was muted. I'm sorry. Amen. I want to thank you for stopping by and sharing um, those that, that song and sharing that beautiful prayer. Um, I pray that God bless you for your obedience. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I want to thank you guys that have tuned in these last two days to support um, the conference, to support these amazing women. Because each one of these women that you have heard from over these last two days are part of the L3 movement. They shared affirmations. They shared um, prayers. Some, but they are a part of this book. They are a part of this movement. They did not think it robbery to share. To, they had something that they wanted to pour into somebody. Whoever pick up this book, they're going to be able to pour into somebody something that they have used in their life. We're not just, just throwing out randomly things. We're sharing things that has helped us through this journey that we call life. Because I'm here to tell you that it has not been easy. When In 2012, when he told me, he dropped Jeremiah 29 and 11 in my, in my spirit and told me that he had a plan for me to prosper me, for me to be in good health, yes. for me to have hope in the future. Did I know that I was going to experience domestic violence? Did I know that I was going to almost lose my leg in my life? Did I know that I was going to lose six family members in one month? No, I did not know, but I did not give up on God. I did yeah. not give up on his word because I know that his word will not return to him void. But it's time for us to help heal these cities because like Chinchilla said, there's too much black on black crime. There's too much violence. There's too much going on in our communities. It's time to bring healing. Yes. And he dropped in my spirit 
It's time for us as women to hover over the city. That's what these hills are for. It's time for us to hover over the city. It's time for us to take flight and to be over the city. And the only way we can do that is in the spirit. You can't do it down on the ground yes. marching. You can't do it down on the ground walking back and forth. You can't do it. You got to be able to get in the spirit and go to the next level. So if you're not never yes. ready to go to the next level in the next realm, then this may not be this not, may not be the course for you. This may not be the movement for you. This right. may not be the journey for you. Because when you drop that in my spirit, that's what he dropped in my spirit. It's time to hover. It's time yes. to take flight. Yes. It's time to be over the city. And you can't mm. do it from the ground. The only way you're going to be able to do this mm -hmm. is in the spirit. The only way you're going to be able to do this yes. in the spirit. You have to move that ego out the way. That ego got to go. It's time. Yes. He's equipped us. I'll get a, a lot mm. of us have sit under some great teaching for years and years and years. You got all this yes. teaching on the inside of you. Mm -hmm. Now it's time for it to come up out of you so that you can empower somebody else. You got all this power down on the inside of you because he said he will position you to be an overcomer by being a willing vessel to empower others through your resilience. That's what power means. He said he will empower you to do that. Yes. Now you got it on the inside of you. Now it's time for it to come up out so you can empower others through love. Yes. Love. Mm. And then yes. The, S, the only way we can do it is being a servant. Y'all got to be willing to serve. That's right. Got to be willing to serve. That's right. Yeah, I want to thank you guys mm. for joining us tonight. I hope you have been blessed. I, I truly have been blessed by all of these women. Um, if you have not yes. copied your copy of this um amazing book, um, it is available on Kindle. Let me tell y'all how busy the enemy has been. I got to put it out there because a lot of people have been coming in my inbox. So I'm just going to be transparent and I'm just going to share with y'all. So since Friday, the enemy has been busy. Um, Amazon actually removed the, the paper. I, I, y'all had to reformat 402 pages. I've not had no sleep since Friday. Oh. I've still been doing my radio shows. I've still been doing everything that I'm supposed to be doing because I am on a mission. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm waiting right now for Amazon to say it's approved. <laughs> I had to go back. I had to redo the the, the some things with the cover. I, I it's been it's been a journey because I know it's gonna bless. Oh, I know it's gonna yeah. bless. When I tell you, y'all y'all mm -hmm. gonna have to pick up the book. If you hadn't went over and 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 looked at the Kindle version, go over and look at the Kindle version. There, there's some difference between the printed copy and the Kindle version. There's not going to be any color. Um, had to change a lot of stuff, but I had to wow. do what I had to do to make sure that this book got out because I know it's going to bless lives. Just simple as that. I know it's going to bless lives. Hmm. Yes. God is moving. Yes. And like they say, if you go sit on the sideline, if you're going to stay down, stay down there. Don't hinder the next person from growing and elevating. Because it's time to evolve. It's time to see progress. That's right. No regression. Yes. I love y'all. And there's absolutely right. nothing that you guys can do about it. Um, continue to follow me. Go over to the L3 Movement page. Follow me on the L3 Movement page. Y'all know I am a host over on o &E Dynasty. I'm on every four weeks at 9.30 p.m. I'm also the commissioner of that great network. Um, so I'm on every night listening to my amazing host, Um. <laughs> Because we have some of the best hosts on internet radio. A chinchilla is one of them. Yes. But um, we have some of the best hosts. If you've not checked us out, please go over, check us out. Check us out. My show, um, right. I'm, I don't really know when I'm going to be on the next one. Because I thought I was going to be on the 22nd. But I've been listening to people share their shows. And they've been giving some, some difference. I got to check with Brother O. But, y'all, I'm going to be posting and sharing how you can follow me. The best thing I can tell you to do is follow me on Linktree. Um, queen of the collaboration. They labeled me as the queen of the collaboration, so I, I can't I can't back down from it. So um, follow me on LinkedIn, yes, yes. queen of collaboration. Um, it will share all of my different platforms that I'm a part of. I, I'm they got me on everything, TikTok, um, Instagram. All, all my babies right. say, come on over here to TikTok, <laughs> come on over here to Instagram. So you know what? I got to meet them because they on Instagram, they on TikTok. Mm -hmm. They say, Miss Angela, you need to be over here. So Miss Angela got to go over there because those babies are wanting. They they want guidance. They want leadership. So when they want it, you got to go. You can't think yes. that, that that you too sanctified and too holy to be over somewhere else yes. because they need you too. That's right. They need you too. Mm -hmm. They need you. That's right. Y'all, and we got to bridge that gap between 
the yes. OGs, the old, old school, and, and, and these young these young kids. And I'm seeing it, y'all. I'm seeing it because I tell you, I seen it take place on my network just this week. Young man came on and blessed my heart. I, I, I wanted to come on and say something. Brother O say, no, you can't come on. He said, you got to wait to the end. Because he came on and he blessed me. I just, if I was where he was at, y'all, I would have grabbed him and hugged him because he blessed my heart with what he said. Y'all, these babies want, they 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 want to do right. They they want to know the yes. way. We got to be willing to show right. them the way. And we got to be willing to That's lead right. by example. We can't keep telling them what to do. Because I'm That's gonna right. tell you that everybody told me you want you need to be saved, you need to be this, you need to be that, but I didn't know how. Because nobody told me how. Right. Nobody told me how. They, they, they told me how I, I should be saved and, and what I need to do. But when I started going through things, nobody was there to tell me, oh, you got to do this. You got to do that. It's going to be okay. Go to your word. Find, find a scripture. Bury yourself in the word. Nobody told me that. Mm -hmm. If I knew what I know now, my journey would have been a lot different. But my journey had to be my journey so I could share it with somebody else. So I'm not yeah. complaining. I'm glad I went through it because now I can yes. share it with somebody else so they ain't got to go through. That's why I'm that's here. right. I love y'all and yeah. I'm about to go because I'll be on here another hour and that's not what I want from y'all. I love y'all. Be blessed. Be blessed. Angela. Angela, Angela. Um, uh, quickly turn over to Second Chronicles 714 and let's uh, close out with the scripture. Okay, the go scripture. ahead. Um, I, 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 hold okay. on. You, do you have uh, your Bible? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Uh -huh. Okay. All right, Second Chronicles seven fourteen, very fitting for heal the city and heals y'all. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, that's God, y'all, seek His face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. And that's what we're trying to do, y'all. Amen. Amen. Oh, Pastor Tam, so still I'm bring, yeah, yeah, they I'm still, down. they was hanging in there. They was hanging in there with us. So okay. I, I want to hey, bring them up so they can wave and say goodbye. Hey, um, Cause I definitely have appreciated all of you all on tonight. Um, so I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I can't thank you enough um, for doing what you've done. I pray that God bless you for pouring, for pouring out into the people on today. As you pour it out, I hope he fills yes. you up. As you pour it out. Thank you all for being a part of this. I love you guys. I love, love you. you. Be blessed. Love y'all. Love y'all. And Pastor Tamla, I enjoyed that song. Here I am to worship. I 